Inductee number three, Anne-Marie Tobin. She set a high standard for women's golf beginning when she became the first female player in school history to compete on the boys' varsity golf team. Her legacy would continue with collegiate, local, and regional titles. Her dominance here in Bay State circles was such that in 1994, the Women's Golf Association of Massachusetts renamed its top annual designation the Anne Marie Tobin Player of the Year. Anne Marie would win that honor three times, but it was just the tip of the iceberg on a golf career that is truly unmatched. How you got started in golf, and was it an immediate love, passion for you, and how did you get started? Well, we got started, um, I'm one of six, eight and a half years from oldest to youngest. And um, my parents quickly learned that taking a vacation with six kids to the beach is no vacation. So we joined a club. We joined Thompson Club in North Reading. And my five brothers and sisters and I, we all learned the game along with my mother. Um, my father already had played the game, if you played. Um, <laughs> and we all just grew up there. It was great. Uh, you know, we played golf in the morning. We swam in the afternoon on the swim team. Um, golf in those days at Thompson was, they were very supportive of junior golf, which is, you know, not the same way it is now at a lot of clubs. But we had access to the course, and we had a fantastic golf pro in Bill Flynn, who is also being inducted tonight, um, who really encouraged all of us to play. Um, he was great. He would, if, you, if he saw you, you know, on the, on the driving range, he'd come over and give you a tip. He gave us all jobs in the pro shop, and... He was a tough boss, I'll tell you. He would, uh, he'd walk around snapping his fingers, and you, you knew when he was coming, and you, you got busy. Um, and, and did you know uh, right away that this game wasn't quite so hard? I mean, that... No, 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 not exactly. I thought I was a pretty decent junior player, uh -huh. um, and I, I went to my first junior championship at uh, South Shore Country Club, and my mother drove me. And we got there, and uh, it's a two-day event, and I shot 75. Um, but then I had to play the back nine, and I shot 72. <laughs> so That's usually a joke, but it's, uh, it's it was a real, real thing. <laughs> it was real. It was a long ride home. We didn't go back the second day. Um, and uh, I think my mother knew that, that that would have been too much torture, because I probably would have shot 157 the next day. Okay, so let's get to the boys' high school team. How did that come about, and was it how were you welcomed or not so welcomed? Um, it came about, I just decided I was playing a lot of golf, and I decided I wanted to make the team. Nobody had ever made it, and uh, most of the time after school, I was spending time at the golf course anyway. Cause my father's a retired school teacher, and, or was a teacher at the time, and he would drive whoever wanted to go play golf to Thompson in the afternoons, and one day we kind of talked about it, and so I thought, you know, that's a good idea. I should do that. And um, I went, remember going to the golf course. Again, my mother drove me, a long, winding road to Meadowbrook Golf Club in Reading. And I was afraid to get out of the car, and my mother made me get out of the car. Um, and I don't remember. I'm sure I didn't break 50. But at the time, Reading had a very good team. All the boys were single-digit players. But uh, I was terrible. I mean, there's no doubt. I, I couldn't break 100 especially at Meadowbrook, which was a really long course. This was your freshman? This was my junior year. Junior year, junior okay. Year. okay. Um, and the first hole is an uphill par four, and the boys would be hitting driver nine iron, and I did driver three wood and then have a nine iron. So I learned very quickly that being a short hitter does have its advantages at times. But the boys were great. Um, I still remember the first match I ever played. Uh, it was at Oakley Country Club against Watertown. And the, um, we parred, my partner and I parred the first hole, and we went to take the honor on the second tee. So my partner went over to tee it up, and the water, one of the Watertown boys decided he was going to tee up. So next thing I know, all three boys in my group, they're in a brawl. They're, they're on, the, on, the, on the tee wrestling and throwing punches at each other. And I, I kind of thought, I, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a team player. You know, I'm right there for you. But I didn't know whether I was obligated. Thankfully, the golf coach came and broke it up. And um, he was wonderful. He, his name was John Hollingsworth. And uh, he should have cut me, but he didn't. And he later told me a few years ago, um, he said the only reason he didn't cut me was because I was the only one that didn't complain. 
a gentleman's game, but it needed a lady to put the right touch on that team. Apparently. Oh, okay, so then you went to Mount Holyoke and had a very successful career there, right? Yes, we were very fortunate. We had the college owned the Orchards Golf Club, which was a Donald Ross designed golf course. And we had access 24 seven. Whenever we wanted to play, the golf pro was Bob Bontempo. He was also the golf coach. And uh, if you were willing to go over and hit balls, he was willing to teach. Um, so it was great. I had spent three and a half years there and uh, had some success you know, later, but we, had, we just had a lot of fun. We took a lot of trips. It was, Title IX did not affect us because we were an all women's college. So we basically paid for our trips out of pocket. And uh, I can remember my freshman year, I think I took $40 with me to State College, Pennsylvania, and that lasted three full days. Motel, food, we used to cram four people in a room. Um, but it was a great experience, great experience. So after college, you had quite a uh, career traveling the country. I mean, can you pick out a memorable event or two that uh, really stands out in your mind? Um, yeah, I think winning my first state tournament was great, um, but it took me a long time before I qualified for the U.S. Amateur or the U.S. Mid-Amateur. And the first U.S. Amateur I played was in 1990, and I got lucky and I qualified for match play. And uh, I won a couple of matches. Uh, three or four members of, uh, from our club drove down the night before my, I uh, guess, quarterfinal match, a round of 16 match. And, um, and uh, all of a sudden, th they're going to watch. We had dinner that night. The next day, I got up, went through my practice routine. I was playing a girl named Karen Noble, who was runner up the year before. So she was obviously a very good player. And, uh, I don't know what happened. I went to the range, which normally I don't do the range before I play. And uh, then I went into the clubhouse. And in between, I put my clubs in my car. And what I had forgotten was I locked, I locked my keys in, in the bag. And I had about 12 minutes to my tea time. So I'm thinking, I finally make it here. I finally am here. And, I, and I'm going to have to like default the match? Or what am I going to do? What am I going to play with? So all of a sudden, the club members showed up, and uh, I just, it, there's my husband. They had gone to the airport to pick up my husband, Jimmy, who had flown in that morning. And all I could say to him was, please tell me you have your car keys. Please tell me. And he did. So you know, I unlocked the car. I went off. I lost. But nonetheless, I, I, it wasn't embarrassing. That would have been a tough one to, to remember. So was there a point in your career somewhere where you really thought you kind of made it and said, wow, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I like this game. I'm pretty good at it. And did your parents, after them carting you everywhere, did they kind of realize it at the same time? I don't know that there was a one, one single moment. But I will say that um, the first time I qualified for the state, uh, in 79 at Salem, that's when I thought, OK, I can play this game. Um, but I think it was when I won the state amateur in 88 th that was the first time that I had an opportunity that was incredible. I, you know, I'd made it to the final. We had had rain and rain delays all week. Um, and I remember after winning my semifinal match, going back to the club, and my husband sat me down and kind of said, look, this isn't it. Stop being happy about this. You're not done yet. You know, this, is, this could be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Well, he was right that I wasn't done yet, but he ended up wrong about the once-in-a-lifetime. Um, but I played a great opponent, Lauren Malench. Uh, she made a great comeback on the back nine, hold out for an eagle on one hole. And uh, going up the 18th hole, I had a putt this long, up, up, uh, uphill on 18 at Brayburn. And uh, I yanked it left. I missed it. I, I just missed it. And it just fell in on the low side. And honestly, I feel like had I blown that, I would have, that would have been the moment I would have thought, I don't know how to play this game. But uh, so rather than the opposite, the way you phrased it, I think it just, success just kind of breeds. And then you get confident. And um, I mentioned before, it always helped I was the shorter hitter. I got to hit first. And uh, it can drive an opponent crazy when you, you, know, you just plot along, keep putting it on the green, two putting, going on to the next hole. So. Well. Quite a career. Congratulations on your induction to the Hall of Fame. Thank Andrew you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.